The young King Farouk, in the uniform of Field Marshal, paces the marble staircase of the Kubi Palace, awaiting the arrival of his 17-year-old bride. Farouk was ousted from his throne just months after the birth of his heir. In the heart of Egypt's golden era, a seemingly enchanting romance blossomed between Queen Farida and King Farouk, promising a fairy tale future. Yet, beneath the glittering surface lay a complex tale of love, power, and betrayal. This video invites us into the depths of their ill-fated union, revealing how a dream transformed into a cruel reality. From Cinderella to Queen, the early days of Farida and Farouk. The story of Queen Farida and King Farouk of Egypt reads like a page torn from a storybook, where a young girl's life is forever changed by a chance encounter with a king. Farida, born Safina Zulfikar, was the daughter of a prominent judge and lived a life of comfort and privilege among Egypt's elite. This young couple got married on January 20th, 1938. Her transformation from a high-class girl to a queen is a tale marked by romance, opulence, and ultimately, disillusionment. Their initial meeting was nothing short of a cinematic moment. It happened in the opulent halls of the Egyptian palace, where destiny had arranged for their paths to cross. Farouk, freshly crowned and the most eligible bachelor in Egypt, laid eyes on Farida during a royal event. She was accompanying her mother, who served in the palace, a setting that would soon become Farida's future home. The young king was immediately smitten, and from that moment, Farida's life was set on a course that would lead her from the shadows of her upper-class upbringing into the blinding light of royalty. The romance that ensued was whirlwind and public. Farouk pursued Farida with the fervor of a man enchanted, leaving no stone unturned to woo her. Lavish gifts, romantic gestures, and public declarations of love were the order of the day, capturing the imagination of the Egyptian people and the attention of the world. Farouk's determination to win Farida's heart was matched only by his desire to make her his queen. Despite the reservations expressed by her father, who foresaw the complexities of royal marriage, Farida was swept up in the fairy tale, a Cinderella story made real. Their wedding was an event of unparalleled splendor in Egypt. The streets of Cairo were adorned with lanterns and decorations, celebrating the union of Farouk and Farida with pomp and pageantry that had rarely been seen. Farida, now Queen of Egypt, wore a wedding gown of exquisite beauty, a creation that symbolized the union of tradition and modernity. The nation rejoiced, enchanted by the young couple who seemed to embody the hope and aspirations of a modern Egypt. The golden cage life inside the palace. Queen Farida's entrance into royal life marked the beginning of her existence within a golden cage, a realm where luxury and restriction were two sides of the same coin. The palaces of Egypt, with their opulent halls, lush gardens, and endless corridors became her domain a domain as confining as it was magnificent. Farida's life, now under the constant gaze of the public and the court, was one of grandeur but also of isolation. Life inside the palace was a dazzling spectacle of wealth and power. Farida was surrounded by priceless artifacts, jewels of unimaginable value, and attire befitting only those of the highest royal blood. Her days were filled with official duties, ceremonial functions, and the endless rituals that come with being a queen. Yet, despite the outward show of splendor, Farida's life was meticulously regulated. As was her duty, the teenage queen got pregnant almost immediately. Every appearance and interaction was choreographed, leaving little room for personal freedom or spontaneity. King Farouk's lifestyle stood in stark contrast to the controlled existence of his queen. Farouk was known for his extravagant and often reckless behavior. His penchant for luxury cars, lavish parties, and gambling was legendary, embodying a hedonistic pursuit of pleasure that was both criticized and envied. Farouk's indulgences were not just a personal vice, but a public spectacle, contributing to a growing dissonance between the monarchy and the people of Egypt. This dichotomy between Farida's restricted existence and Farouk's flamboyance created an underlying tension. Farida, while adorned in the trappings of royalty, found herself confined by the very things that defined her status. The palace, for all its beauty, was a golden cage, limiting her freedom and shielding her from the reality of the world outside its walls. 
As Farouk continued to embrace his extravagant lifestyle, the contrast with Farida's more reserved and dutiful approach to her role became increasingly apparent. This divergence not only highlighted the differences in their personalities, but also reflected the broader challenges facing the monarchy. Farida's life within the palace, though filled with the luxury few could imagine, was a poignant reminder of the limitations and responsibilities that came with her crown, the unraveling strains in the marriage. As the initial glow of the royal wedding faded, the marriage between Queen Farida and King Farouk began to show signs of strain. The fairy tale romance that had captivated a nation slowly gave way to a more complex and troubled reality. Within the gilded walls of the palace, personal and public challenges started to emerge, laying bare the fragility of their union. Farouk's infidelities became one of the most painful aspects of their marriage for Farida. The king's indiscretions were not just rumors whispered in the corridors of the palace, they were well known and often flaunted, leaving Farida to face public humiliation alongside her private heartache. Farouk's affairs were a stark betrayal, undermining the foundation of trust and loyalty that Farida had believed her marriage was built on. The king's blatant disregard for the sanctity of their union was not only a personal affront to Farida, but also a blow to the image of the monarchy, as the Egyptian people looked on with a mix of dismay and disapproval. Meanwhile, Farida faced her own set of challenges in adapting to her role as queen. The transition from a private individual to a public figure was fraught with difficulties. Farida had to navigate the complex etiquette of the royal court, fulfill her duties as a national symbol, and manage the expectations placed upon her as a wife and mother. This role required a delicate balance, as she sought to maintain her dignity and grace under the weight of her responsibilities and the scrutiny of the public eye. Farida's struggle was compounded by the lack of support from Farouk, who was often absent or preoccupied with his own pursuits. King Farouk was infuriated not only with his queen, but with himself. The couple's inability to present a united front further exacerbated the issues within their marriage. Farida's attempts to reach out to Farouk, to bridge the growing gap between them, were met with indifference or hostility. The king's volatile temper and unpredictable behavior made it difficult for Farida to connect with him, leaving her feeling isolated and unsupported. A Kingdom in Transition Egypt under Farouk King Farouk's reign coincided with a tumultuous period in Egypt's history, a time when the nation was navigating the choppy waters of political transition and social upheaval. The young king inherited a country grappling with the remnants of colonial influence, rising nationalist sentiments, and the quest for modernization. Farouk's policies and leadership style, however, often exacerbated the existing tensions, leading to widespread discontent and challenging the monarchy's position within the changing social fabric of Egypt. Farouk's attempt to consolidate power and assert royal authority often put him at odds with the burgeoning nationalist movement that sought to diminish British influence in Egypt. His failure to effectively address these colonial entanglements, coupled with perceived mismanagement of the country's resources, fostered a sense of disillusionment among the Egyptian populace. The king's lavish lifestyle and apparent indifference to the economic struggles faced by many Egyptians further alienated him from his subjects. Stories of Farouk's opulence, contrasted with the hardships endured by ordinary people, fueled resentment and contributed to a deteriorating public image of the royal family. The royal family's public image was also tarnished by Farouk's personal indiscretions and the visible strains in his marriage to Queen Farida. The contrast between the couple's private turmoil and their public facade highlighted the disconnect between the monarchy and the realities of Egyptian society. As Farouk became increasingly isolated from the everyday lives of his subjects, his ability to lead and enact meaningful change was questioned. The political landscape of Egypt under Farouk was marked by instability and unrest. The king's attempts to navigate the complex interplay of domestic and international politics often resulted in criticism and backlash. By the 1940s, King Farouk was caught in the middle of world war politics. His reign saw a series of governmental changes and policy shifts 
that reflected the king's struggle to maintain control amid growing calls for reform and independence. As Egypt stood on the precipice of monumental change, the monarchy's relevance and the king's leadership were increasingly scrutinized. The kingdom in transition was not just about the political and social shifts occurring within the country, but also about the transformation of the monarchy itself. The challenges faced by Farouk's reign, both personal and political, were emblematic of a nation in search of a new identity, striving to reconcile its rich history with the demands of a modern future. The fall of a dynasty, the divorce and its aftermath. The dissolution of Queen Farida and King Farouk's marriage marked not only the end of a personal relationship, but also symbolized the waning influence of a monarchy in the midst of national upheaval. The divorce, finalized in 1948, came after years of public speculation and private agony, casting a long shadow over the royal family's legacy and Egypt's political landscape. The announcement of their divorce sent shockwaves through Egyptian society and beyond. Farida and Farouk had been the golden couple, their marriage a symbol of the monarchy's prestige. However, the unraveling of their union reflected deeper issues within the royal family and the kingdom at large. Farouk's continued infidelities and the couple's apparent estrangement had been poorly concealed secrets, yet the finality of divorce brought a stark reality to the fore. The public reaction was mixed, with some expressing sympathy for Farida, viewing her as a victim of Farouk's excesses and the rigid expectations of royal life. Others saw the divorce as a sign of moral decay within the monarchy, emblematic of Farouk's inability to lead by example. The spectacle of the royal divorce contributed to an already growing disenchantment with the monarchy, undermining its authority and moral standing in the eyes of many Egyptians. For Farida, the divorce meant a departure from the royal life she had known. Though she retained her title and received a settlement, her life took a markedly different direction. Farida focused on her children and her art, seeking a quieter existence away from the public eye. Her dignity and resilience in the face of personal turmoil earned her a measure of respect and sympathy that Farouk, with his continuing indulgences and political missteps, increasingly lacked. For Farouk, the divorce did little to stem the tide of criticism facing his reign. His personal failings, magnified by the breakup of his marriage, fed into broader discontent with his rule. The monarchy's image was further tarnished, and Farouk struggled to regain the affection and respect of his people. The fallout from the divorce extended beyond the personal realms of Farida and Farouk, affecting the monarchy's stability and hastening its decline. The end of their marriage was a precursor to the broader societal and political shifts that would eventually lead to the revolution of 1952, which forced Farouk into exile and ended the monarchy in Egypt. The fall of a dynasty, precipitated by the collapse of a marriage, marked the close of one era and the uncertain dawn of another as Egypt navigated its way towards a new identity. Life after royalty, Farida's independence. After her divorce from King Farouk, Queen Farida embarked on a journey of self-discovery and independence that marked a significant departure from her life within the confines of the Egyptian monarchy. Freed from the expectations and restrictions of royal duties, Farida found solace and expression in her art, becoming an accomplished painter. Her work, often reflective of her experiences and emotional landscape, gained recognition for its depth and sensitivity. Farida's art became a channel through which she could communicate her innermost feelings and perspectives, a stark contrast to her previously public life, where personal expression was often curtailed by protocol. Farida's transition to life after royalty was not without its challenges. The adjustment to a more private existence, while liberating, also meant navigating a world vastly different from the one she had known as queen. However, Farida embraced her new circumstances with grace and determination. She devoted herself to her three daughters, ensuring they received a stable upbringing despite the tumultuous changes. Her role as a mother was paramount, and she worked tirelessly to provide them with the love and support they needed. In addition to her artistic and familial commitments, Farida became involved in various charitable activities. Her efforts in this arena were indicative of her continued commitment to serving the Egyptian people, 
albeit in a different capacity than before. Farida's philanthropy and her art were closely linked, with proceeds from her exhibitions often donated to charity. This blend of creativity and compassion underscored Farida's multifaceted personality and her desire to make a positive impact. Farida's legacy is a testament to her resilience and versatility. Despite the hardships she faced, including her battle with leukemia that ultimately claimed her life in 1988, Farida's contributions to art and society remain enduring symbols of her strength and independence. Her journey from royalty to a more personal realm of influence highlights the profound transformations she underwent, embodying a story of renewal and self-empowerment. Farida's life after the monarchy serves as an inspiration, illustrating how personal adversity can be transformed into a source of creativity and altruism. Through her art, charity work, and the dignified manner in which she navigated her post-royal life, Farida left behind a legacy that continues to resonate, celebrating the spirit of independence and the power of personal reinvention. The Shadow of Exile, Farouk's Final Years In the aftermath of his abdication and subsequent exile in 1952, King Farouk's life entered a period marked by decline and introspection, shadowed by the loss of his throne and the fading glory of his reign. Farouk's final years were a stark departure from the opulence and power that had defined his time as Egypt's last king. Exiled to Italy, Farouk attempted to recreate a semblance of the royal lifestyle he had lost, but the grandeur was unmistakably diminished, a reflection of his changed fortunes. Farouk's personal life continued to be tumultuous in exile. He married Naraman Sadek, who was much younger and hailed from a different social background, earning her the moniker, Cinderella of the Nile. This marriage, however, was short-lived, ending in divorce as Farouk's lifestyle and the pressures of exile took their toll. He later married a third time to Irma Capiche Minutolo, an Italian who was not of royal blood, a union that further signified Farouk's departure from his past. These marriages, while offering moments of personal happiness, also underscored Farouk's search for stability and companionship in a life unmoored from its royal anchors. In exile, Farouk's health and physique notably declined. Once known for his charm and looks, he gained significant weight, a physical transformation that became a source of public commentary and personal distress. His health issues were exacerbated by a lifestyle that continued to include excessive eating and smoking. Habits that Farouk found difficult to break, even as their consequences became increasingly apparent. Farouk's untimely death in 1965, at the age of 45, was a somber conclusion to a life that had once held so much promise. Collapsing at a dinner table in Rome, his passing was attributed to a heart attack, though rumors of poisoning circulated, reflecting the controversial and conspiratorial nature that had often surrounded his life. His death marked the end of an era, closing the chapter on a monarchy that had been a central part of Egypt's identity for centuries. Farouk's final years in exile offer a poignant insight into his character and personal demise. Stripped of his power and living far from the country he once ruled, Farouk grappled with his identity and legacy. The shadow of exile cast a long darkness over his last days, a time of reflection on what had been lost and the personal cost of a life once lived in the relentless glare of public scrutiny and royal expectations. His death, while marking the end of his personal journey, also served as a reminder of the transient nature of power and the profound impact of exile on those who have known the heights of authority and the depths of its loss. Historical Parallels Similar Royal Romances The tumultuous marriage of Queen Farida and King Farouk shares striking similarities with other royal unions that have captivated public attention, notably the marriage of Princess Diana and Prince Charles. These relationships, though separated by decades and diverse cultural contexts, reflect common themes of love, betrayal, and the pressures of royal duties, providing a fascinating lens through which to explore the complexities of life under the royal spotlight. Like Farida and Farouk, Diana and Charles entered their marriage amid a flurry of public excitement and media frenzy, with the world watching eagerly. Both marriages began with fairy tale expectations, 
only to unravel under the weight of personal differences, external pressures, and the intense scrutiny of the public eye. Diana, much like Farida, found herself thrust into a royal role that demanded a level of conformity and sacrifice she was unprepared for, struggling to navigate her place within the royal family and her identity as an individual. Infidelity played a central role in the disintegration of both marriages, with Farouk's numerous affairs and Charles's relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles causing deep personal pain and public scandal. These infidelities not only eroded the trust and affection within these marriages, but also fueled media speculation and public debate, casting a shadow over the royal family's reputations. Moreover, both Farida and Diana channeled their experiences and personal struggles into meaningful causes, using their platforms to engage in philanthropy and to advocate for issues close to their hearts. Their ability to connect with the public on a personal level, coupled with their grace in the face of adversity, cemented their legacies as figures of compassion and resilience, transcending their roles within the monarchy. The parallels between these two royal romances underscore the universal challenges faced by those who marry into royalty, where personal happiness often clashes with public expectations and the demands of royal duty. These stories, though unique in their details, highlight the enduring fascination with the lives of royals and the complex interplay between love, power, and public perception in the highest echelons of society. The legacy of Farida and Farouk, the marriage of Queen Farida and King Farouk and its eventual dissolution, left an indelible mark on Egyptian society and the institution of the monarchy. Their story, a blend of romance, drama, and tragedy, continues to resonate, offering insights into the complexities of royal life and the broader socio-political shifts in Egypt during the mid-20th century. Today, their legacy is multifaceted, reflecting the tumultuous period in which they lived and the evolving narrative of Egypt's royal past. The union of Farida and Farouk initially symbolized hope and continuity for the Egyptian monarchy, presenting a glamorous facade that captivated both the nation and the world. However, as their marriage unraveled amidst personal and public challenges, it mirrored the declining fortunes of the monarchy itself. Their personal failings and the public fallout from their divorce played into the growing disillusionment with royal governance, acting as a catalyst for the revolutionary sentiments that eventually led to the monarchy's abolition in 1952. In contemporary Egyptian society, Farida and Farouk are remembered with a mixture of nostalgia and critique, the fascination with their lives and the bygone era they represent persists, evident in the continued interest in their story through books, films, and popular culture. They are often portrayed as tragic figures, caught between the demands of their roles and their personal desires, highlighting the human aspect of their experiences against the backdrop of historical events. Their legacy also prompts reflection on what could have been, had their marriage survived, or had the monarchy adapted to the changing political landscape? Could a stronger, more united royal family have stemmed the tide of revolution? Would a more progressive approach to governance have preserved the monarchy in some form? These questions linger, fueling speculative debates about the potential paths not taken by Egypt's last king and queen. Moreover, Farida and Farouk's story serves as a cautionary tale about the pitfalls of power and the importance of personal integrity and leadership. Their lives underscore the consequences of personal actions on public institutions and the delicate balance between public duty and private happiness. As Egypt continues to navigate its post-monarchical identity, the legacy of Farida and Farouk remains a poignant reminder of a pivotal era in the country's history. Their marriage, with its highs and lows, offers enduring lessons on the complexities of life in the public eye and the impact of individual choices on national destiny.